In this lecture, we're going to look at the scapula. Now this happens to be a right scapula, and uh, we'll talk about how to tell right from left in a moment. Um, and this is also going to be the posterior view. And how we know it's the posterior view is because, um, well, if we looked at an entire skeleton and uh, we saw the scapula up against the rib cage, this is the view that you would see looking from behind. Okay, and one of the big landmarks that's going to tell us that this is the posterior view is this right here. This is the spine of the scapula. So the spine of the scapula. Okay, now above that spine, we have this indented area here, and we call a big indention a fossa. So since that is above the spine, we're going to call it the supraspinous fossa. And then below that is another big indentation, and we're going to call that the infraspinous fossa. And what lives there is going to be the supraspinatus muscle for the supraspinous fossa and the infraspinatus muscle for the infraspinous fossa. Now, if we fo follow the um, scapular spine out, we're going to see this structure here, and that is going to be called the acromion. So the acromion. You might also hear it as acromial process. That's the acromion. Uh, other structures that we're going to see are going to be the lateral or axillary border. Axillary refers to the armpit. We have the inferior angle at the bottom. We have the superior angle at the top. And then off to the side here, we're going to have the medial or vertebral border. Okay, now as we start to turn it, toward us, we're going to see this area here that is called the glenoid fossa. Okay, glenoid fossa can also be called the glenoid cavity. And what fits in the glenoid cavity is going to be the humerus. So this is the humerus. And uh, this is how we can tell that this is a right, because if we know that this is the back, and we know that um, the humerus has to fit in, so we know this has to point laterally, and that's how we know that's the lateral side. Um, and so this is going to tell us, again, looking from behind, that this is a right scapula and a right humerus. So again, this is the glenoid cavity. And if we turn it around a little bit more, we're going to see this thing. It kind of looks like a little snake to me, doesn't it? Okay, this is a snake. And um, so I always think of what kind of snake? It would be a cobra. And a cobra starts with C. And see how this is almost C-shaped as well? Now, what that's going to help me to remember is this is the coracoid process the coracoid process. And the reason that's important is because in the skeleton we have a coronoid process, a conoid process, and a coracoid process. So coronoid, coracoid, and conoid. So that can get pretty confusing. And so that's why I think of this as a cobra and we have two scapulas so it has two C's in it. So CC for coracoid. Okay, so again the coracoid process. Now this is the anterior portion. This is going to be up against the rib cage on the, uh, on the entire skeleton. And so we actually have to kind of peek through the ribs to see it. Okay, and so this is going to be called the subscapular fossa. And the muscle that lives here is the subscapularis. And one thing that I, I didn't mention is that the subscapularis, the supraspinatus muscle, and the infraspinatus muscle are going to be three of the four rotator cuff muscles. And so they're all attached to this scapula. 
another structure that's a little difficult to see on this particular model, um, but there is going to be a notch back here. Okay, and I guess we turn around to the anterior view. You can kind of see it right there. Little notch. It's usually a little more pronounced in other models or other specimens. And um, that's going to be the scapular notch. We have a neurovascular bundle that goes through there. And again, it's going to have the same borders pretty much. We're going to have uh, the superior border, or I'm sorry, the superior angle, the inferior angle, the medial or vertebral border, and the uh, lateral or axillary border. 